Souls. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second day of the SLS. Once again, I'm Patrick with Chase. And Chase, are you ready for games that may just top the games we saw yesterday? I mean, it's going to be tough. There's were some fantastic games that we saw in there. Uh, a lot of objective control, a lot of kills going out. I mean, it was an interesting time. It was a fun time, too. Oh, for sure, for sure. Let's take a look at the teams we got competing today. All right. First off, we have Ashen Valkyrie, a team we have yet to see. We have Kabink in the top lane, Hybrid Carry in jungle, Dopa but Artist in the mid lane, Yillian in bot, and False for support. Yeah, very strong team. Very. Very. <laughs> Very, and their sister team, Ashen Ascension, who we saw yesterday. We got King Mike coming out of the top lane. X Cadentorix in the jungle. Tommy two time mid. Killjoy 226 in bot lane with dubs as support. Now, Chase, do you, do you feel we're going to see a stronger showing from Ashen Ascension today? Because I feel like they have a lot more to show. I think so. I think so. I think the hype was there for Tommy two time last night, but. I think this is where he's really going to show what he's got. Mm, for sure, for sure. Can't wait to see what they have to offer. No, All right, just moments good. from now, we'll be tuning into Champions Select. But we, anything else you want to add before these games start? I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, excited ready. I'm ready for this thing to After go. After yesterday, we can only go from up. This is true. This is true. I love what happened yesterday, and there was some good games. Macro Gaming ended up taking both the games yesterday, uh, but... One of them was still pretty but close. With Macro Gaming not on the slate today, we are mere moments away from seeing a new victor. We are. Indeed. We are. And that's where we got to think, you know, who's going to pull ahead here. It's kind of nice. All right. And technical difficulties aside, Champion Select is almost underway. So far, we are seeing a Skarner and Hecarim ban on the blue side with a Volibear ban on the red side. Visuals soon to come. Interesting bands coming out so far. First time I've seen the Skarner band, but here's some good things about him, though. Might actually end up being a strong pick. Yeah, he's one of those champions I love. You know, you just kind of pinch your way around the map, and then you grab somebody with the tail and just throw them into your whole team. There's really nothing I mean, you can do to something like that. As far as I know, that's exactly how Skarner works. Right. It's fun. Plus, you get to play a little mini game collecting and uh, All right. getting his rip. Seeing a set ban on the red side, followed by a Camille ban on the blue side. So, a little bit of uh, pressure go shown on the top laners here. Three top lane bans and a Gragas ban to finish it off. And three I like jungle that. Bans. I like that Gragas ban. I mean, he is so powerful now that just the barrel combos alone are going to put you down. Plus, with that flash, it's just hard to beat. Oh, for sure. For sure. All right, first pick will be coming in any moment for the top lane. We've seen a Pantheon oh, pick. That is powerful. One of those versatile champions. You can throw them top lane, jungle, mid lane, or support. You really don't know. You have the versatility with that one. Depending on how aggressive the team, you could even see a Pantheon bot in a kill lane. Don't think we'll see that, but it's always a possibility. I, mean, I hope so. Oh, and it and looks like we're seeing another Caitlyn Morgana game from Ash and Ascension. Going for the comfort picks, going for that strong lane. We'll see if they have show better results today. Yeah, I mean, I think it was there. I think they just got overpowered by the Vayn Nami pick, but it's still a great combo. I, I mean, I for still sure. love that Caitlyn trap on, under the Morgue bind. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to stop. Can't really do anything to get out of it. Oh, hey, oh. there it is. All right, get caught up. So far on the blue side, we're seeing... A Pantheon and Bard pick, so un unlikely to be a Pantheon support. And a Caitlyn Morgana pick on the side of Ashen Ascension. It appears we have the names inverted once more. Well, one day. One day, ladies and gentlemen, the quality of the stream will meet the quality of the casters. But that day is not today. No, I mean, but it's coming. And that's the thing, you know, you realize it's wrong. It gets the adrenaline flowing, and it goes for a better stream. Yeah, we're doing what we can over here. We found this guy homeless on the streets, and we just wanted to give him a shot, you know? Everyone yeah. deserves that shot. And he did. The, the first thing we he said when he saw the computer, is, is this a Mac? Yeah. We and, knew we had uh, a rough photo ahead we of put him. We put him through that test, the USB test, and he plugged it in right away. Normally, you plug it in, it's wrong. You flip it over, plug it in, wrong. And then you flip it back the original way, and then it finally goes and in. And that's when we knew we had trouble on our oh, hands. Yeah, All that's right. When we knew back was into the game. It looks like we're going to see an Olaf in the jungle from the side of Ashen Ascension, and Ezreal AD Carry on the side of Valkyrie. 
So we got some strong picks here going into the second round of bans. A Shen top ban. We're really seeing a lot of comfort top picks being banned in that second round. Yeah, Shen pretty much banned every single time that we've seen the gameplay here. That just shows that he's just such a powerful champion mm -hmm. with that uh, the ult. You can really just go anywhere. Plus, it's so annoying when you get someone down to 50 HP and all of a sudden a 2,000 HP Shen shield shows up on him. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Malphite ban here. Seems to be a pretty common theme. I have yet to see Malphite make it through one of these pick bans. I'm going to Wukong, Wukong ban. Yep. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. Just You, you see somebody do yeah, good on it, yeah. just take it away. That's got to be in direct response to the game yesterday. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. Ooh, and and Azir, Azir ban. ban. Wow. Okay. Don't see a lot of Azir these days too much anymore. Right. Uh, I kind of love back when he could just damage the tower with one of his abilities. That was a. Uh, oh, the oh one. yes. That was back. That's right. In the day. Yeah. Oh my God. Back when all of his abilities did three things. Yeah. That's I suppose what... were the times. Remember when his E gave a shield? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, knock up. Now oh, that's it gives right. a shield. Oh, that's now, right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, and we're going to see the Gnar make it through. So those top lane bans are going to make it so that this Gnar is likely going to have a pretty decent time top lane. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, King Mike said, hey, the Gnar beat me top lane. I'm just going to do exactly what he did. Yeah, because we got Camille off the board, Volibear off the board, Set off the board, Shen and Wukong. What are we going to see out of the side of Valkyrie to respond to this Gnar? And it looks the like the Malphite, of course. Just as I was saying earlier, first time we're seeing Malphite make it through. And... While Malphite may struggle a little bit early, he's just going to stack, stack, stack that armor. And with 380 threats on the side of Ascension, they got to be looking a little nervous. I mean, Malphite, it's one of those questionable picks. Uh, with the Morgana Black Shield, it's going to be tough to get a Caitlyn pick off on that. For sure, but Malphite is an a does have an AoE ultimate. So yes. he's going to hit. Black Shield can only shield one person. So we got a bunch of targets that are going to be affected. But with the Olaf ult and the Morgana Black Shield, those are two targets that they're not going to be able to hit. No, and I like the Syndra pick. Such a heavy control mage. I mean, you and can a fairly, just And a fairly board. safe pick on top of that, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the best things in the match is, you know, you just see her hit somebody with the ult, and it's 100% of the Ooh, HP. Ooh, I love this pick out of Ash and Ascension. Going with the Akali, we are going to see this man going for some kills, trying to snowball on that Syndra, get the early leads, roam and affect the map. A great aggressive pickup by the side of ascension you can tell just by those picks they are going for a 25 or less minute win yeah i mean i think ascension might have a little tough time in the lane with that akali pick syndra does have the range True. but if there's a way that you can sustain maybe with fleet footwork or something you're going to be looking pretty good in the mid game oh most definitely and we got some nasty scaling coming out of the side of valkyrie with that syndra that ezreal now some people might say it's more of a mid game spike but I say that team scales fairly well. And with the Malphite oh, yeah. front line and the Pantheon diving in, it's going to be hard to keep all that back line of Ascension safe. No, that is absolutely true. Uh, it's just so much raw damage. And I always love just seeing the Malphite with the 900 armor when the shield's still up from his passive. It's always a classic just to see that. Oh, for sure. For sure. All right. Looks like we're going to see pretty standard summoners in the bot lane. Heal on both AD carries. None of that teleport stuff anymore. Got ex exhaust coming out of the bard. Not looking to be too aggressive in the early game, but with threats like the Olaf, the Akali diving in, exhaust is going to be a really valuable summoner. Yeah, this game. Ex exhaust is the pick to go just to reduce some of that damage. And I mean, it's also nice to set up with the Q. I mean, the aggressiveness that comes out of bard. People sleep on it. He has a mm -hmm. lot of damage early, and he has some great roam potential. I just want to know if they pick up and go aggressive when he goes on his roam to get his triant. For sure, for sure. All right. We have a few minutes to go before we can get into this action. Chase, initial opinions on this draft. Who do you think is going to come out on top? Just looking at the comps alone, I mean... I want to almost say Valkyrie. Really? Yeah. I would have to agree with you on that. I'm liking, they have a lot more ability to affect things on the map. It's a little bit harder on the side of Ascension for them to force their issue. 
Uh, but it really honestly depends on the, the play from the Akali and the Nar. If Nar can get the sideline control, if Akali can get flanks off, yeah. that game might be over before it even starts. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things we just have to wait and see. You know, we can say as much as we want, but it all comes down to the individual play. Then, of course, it comes down to the team mm -hmm. play. And that's where we we're kind of looking at. And I'm excited to see that. I would say the damage out of Ascension might be slightly higher at most points in the game, but the CC and execution coming out of Ash and Valkyrie might just be too much for them to overcome. Yeah, and that's what we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. All right, coming on a minute now into the game, roughly. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's a great time to tell us about your day today, Pat. <laughs> Let's see. I woke up, went to work, tried to take a nap. Zach texted me too much, and now I'm here. Wow. Sounds actually like a pretty solid day. Yeah, sounds like I want to get some sleep. So let's get into this game as fast as we can. But looks like we still have a few more minutes to go. Yeah, and the timer actually just shot up to 9 minutes and 37 seconds. Um, Just wondering what that's about. I actually, I think it's your lucky number, actually, Pat. What was the number again? 9 minutes and 37 seconds. The same number you said a second ago? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. it must be my lucky number then. Yeah, I mean, I got a memory like an eagle. I don't forget anything. All, uh, all clarity here, ladies and gentlemen. We were not anticipating having to riff for this period of time. Our producer really set us up in the wrong here. Well, I mean, just do your stand-up act. I mean, what's that, like 15 minutes? I, I thought oh, I was I doing it. Was it that bad? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Just tell your famous joke. Come yeah, on. You're going to have to start it off for me. You know, the how do you have a party in space one? You, how do you have a party in space? Yeah, you plan it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there are mere seconds ticking down to we can get into this game. Now, whether it's more or less than 60 seconds, I cannot disclose. Yeah, I mean, that's fun. I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time, too. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. That's okay. That's okay, though. That's okay. I mean, he's he's got a lot on his plate. He's doing everything that he can. And, you know, we got to give a mm. quick shout out to our operator over there. He's managing, I think, five computers, three keyboards, a controller. I mean, he's doing a good job. Yeah, and somehow he's managing to at the same time accomplish nothing. It's honestly quite remarkable. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. Well, that's okay. We have an endless supply of Mountain Dew, and the Doritos are on their way, so we are ready. Ready and raring for yeah. multiple games tonight. Yeah, yeah, Two I mean... games. That's it. You, you take one... action-packed, power-punching games. I couldn't have said it better myself. I really couldn't have. You really couldn't have? No. No, I couldn't have. All right. We are just getting confirmation that the game is not loading. Now, I'm not sure what that means. Ah, it appears, ah. it appears, ladies and gentlemen, that the cat is out of the bag. One or more gamer on either side may be playing on a potato. You really hate to see that. You yeah. really hate to see that. Now, in tiebreaker scenarios, average game load time is going to factor in. It is. It is. Um, Mainly because we are terrible at tracking any other stat. Average game load time is going to be a factor in determining tiebreakers. Well, I mean, I'm pretty good at stats. I mean, I can listen off boom, 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 like no problem, which is great. But, I mean, right. I mean, the game is delayed, you know, three minutes because we're on the spectator mode. Plus, mm -hmm. we got to infact their, their, their load time. But that's that okay. already been apparent. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, it gives you more well, time on the mic. With your support, we'll help grow our resources, and maybe one day we'll have something that close to resembles an actual broadcast. I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, definitely. I think so. I mean, we are starting to get concerned. We, we are going. We may have to call these players for wellness checks. This is taking so long. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where you know you you're probably playing some other game or something like that just to, for the low time. You, I mean, this is Challenger Qs we're talking about. It takes about eighteen minutes. Challenger Qs, you say? Yeah. Eh, close enough. 
Yeah, I mean, it takes like 30 yeah, minutes. Why, they can't tell the difference. Exactly. 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 Well, that's it. It's like the difference between frozen pizza and something you get from a pizzeria. It basically tastes the same. Yeah. I mean, half the time, I didn't even know it was DiGiorno's. I thought it was delivery. Seriously. So that stuff's good. All right. And at this point, I'm starting to question whether the client just crashed and we never actually loaded in. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, I am seeing Summoner's Rift for the first time tonight. And you know what that means. We are tuning in to our first game, Ashen Valkyrie versus Ashen Ascension. And perhaps I spoke too soon. Any moment now, Zach will press the one button he needs to press, and we will be in game. Any moment. Yeah, but I mean, it's one of those things you have a little fun with it. You press two buttons. Maybe three. Maybe four, but oh. Why not? Why oh. not? Are we going to see champions spawning in? I'm seeing it. You guys are going to be seeing it in just a moment. Once again, Ash and Valkyrie on the blue side, taking on Ash and Ascension on the red side. Ascension looking for redemption, and Valkyrie looking for their first strong showing of the split. Yeah, and you know, you got to have, you're, if you're Ascension, you got a lot to prove here. And if you're Valkyrie, you got even more to prove here. I mean, this is your first game coming onto the Rift. You kind of know the gameplay if you watch some VODs or anything. So this is going to be very exciting. For sure, for sure. All right, both teams looking raring and ready to go. Now, if you're if you're playing this early game, what team are you looking for? Um, I think the damage early game, like I was saying, is going to go to Valkyrie. I mean, they got they got a lot of early damage and laning control, which I kind of like. You factor that in and you keep that mm. pressure on it is going to slow down that mid game now, spike that they have for this level one though if th these two teams crash which i don't see happening i would have to say i slightly favor the damage coming out of ascension with that olaf pretty much just the olaf actually so with that <laughs> damage you can get down q spamming and yeah passive. i mean you gotta love Sitting it in the middle of the I, fight. you gotta love it i think he's the only jungler in the game that can run out of mana with a blue buff level one that's why he's so powerful. I know. I know. Just a non-stop second and a half axe throw, axe throw, axe throw. Starting off on the first bus, it's going to be both junglers starting on the bot side with Beaches. Olaf starting on the blue, and Pantheon starting on the red. Yeah, we stay on the leash here. Nothing too fancy. It's just going to be just regular clears for both junglers. Looks like Pantheon going for a little bit more of an aggressive clear, trying to get a quicker gank timing in. Might go, Wolves might just go right to blue, right to Crab. Remain to be seen. We'll see if he has any plans to the old game. Yeah, I think it's just, you hit your, your double buffs, you get an early gank top lane. I mean, he, he knows the Nar's going to be aggressive, he knows he's going to kind of push a little bit, so it leaves him in a compromising spot, and I think that's where he's going to just hope to pick up something there. For sure, for sure. Going for a slower clear path, and Pantheon might look to pressure that top lane. With the Gnar, Gnar without his Mega Form is a little bit vulnerable in the early game if he's not playing with proper spacing. And Pantheon, a fantastic early ganker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I, like I was saying, the mid lane, you know, it's going to be that Cinder control. If you recall, they just farm up a little bit. Go Try ahead. to get maybe a roam or something in here and there, but. Going into that bot lane, a definite HP win on the side of Ascension. But you, you really do expect to see that with the Morgana, with the game. And that pressure. Oh, and Pantheon going in for the steal. Did he bite off more than he can shoot? No, it looks like Olaf was able to oh. get the steal. Okay. Oh, oh the flash follow. We cut away, and we will never know what happened. First blood for the wow. Olaf. To be honest with you, I mean, it looked like Olaf was caught there. He flashed. He knew he was in trouble. Pantheon followed up. I don't Pantheon, know if it was Pantheon a lack of vastly overestimating his damage in the early game. I can only assume there was an outplay in there, but that will have to be left to mystery. Yeah, and, you know, a little bit of mystery, I think, makes it even yeah. better. It's honestly the best kind of broadcast is when you cut away from the action, not cut too. 
No, I mean, it, it keeps the viewers on uh, the edge. You, they, you know, you always go back and you think, oh, I want well, to know what happened there. Well, I mean, if you think about it, once we enable subscription buttons, you're only going to be able to see that if you subscribe with Twitch Prime. Yeah, and that subscription, I think, is going to be Oh, hold you right there, Chase. Looks like we got Olaf pressuring in on the Malphite in the top lane. Not going to lead to too much. Not a lot of kill pressure between those two champions. A decent amount of damage. Looks like they're just going to slowly walk back. Help push that wave a little bit. Did it even need help? Pantheon oh, looking to respond to the Olaf. Has he not here. learned his lesson? Looks like he has. Looks like he's going to back right off. Go back, farm the camps he hasn't farmed yet. And try to salvage this disadvantage he has in the early game. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it was a close fight. I mean, Pantheon and Olaf both have that mm -hmm. massive damage, level one. It's just apparently Olaf just has a little bit more. I don't well, know. Well, lower Olaf gets, the more, that's what I was saying, the lower, lower Olaf gets, the higher his attack speed, the more his DPS output. And uh, just a little side note here, this is one of the reasons why I really love the Ezreal Bard lane. Ezreal is a very good AD carry at playing at distance, just standing out to you, and still getting farm, while Bard has a chance to roam. This, however, might not be looking too good for the Ezreal, but Kaylee's not able to chain it with the trap, and Ezreal will walk out. Just a little bit of HP missing, but plenty of left farm up this way at a fairly safe distance. Yeah, and I mean, you're oh, not that huge. Never! I spoke too right soon. There. Heal being caught by the Ezreal. What I can only assume to be an E combo mixed with the trap by the Caitlyn. A huge chunk of damage going on to the Ezreal. Yeah, I mean, if you put those traps right next to the tower, and it's kind of hard to see from certain angles. Yep, and there's so one right there that we couldn't see. Until yeah, so you're just, farming, you're just farming, and all of a sudden you're hit by a cake trap, and bam, 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 you're hit by three more abilities. Definitely, definitely. You can already see the Malphite in the top lane stacking that armor. Already got the cloth armor. Building probably to that Sunfire Aegis, and Malphite's going to reach a point where Nar is going to have to put in extra work to burn through him. Mm. And I like uh, is that the arcane comment on Malphite. Mm. It really helps in this kind of lane where you are a little bit at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to poke. That little extra damage from the comment with the Malphite slow makes it pretty much a guarantee the comment's going to land and these mad damage is going to go through. Caitlyn with the aggressive move yeah. and doesn't have the cojones to follow with the flash. Oh man, we really want to see that aggression out of Ashen Valkyrie in that first game. But it looks like they're playing a little more of a measured game. They're going to keep their advantage nice and slow, have this wave crash into the turret, and as well miss out on all this farm. And that will lead into an early dragon. Really strong rotation coming out of Ashen Valkyrie in the early game. Yep. Ascension, rather. You push up the mid lane, you push up the bot lane, you push them out bot lane, so hey, listen, dragon is going to be open the safety lane. That's exactly what they Dragon stack is a great win condition to play for if you're on the side of Ascension with the stronger bot lane. With, at this point, the stronger jungler. All that yeah. pressure is being put to good use. It looks like Akali is already able to put some pressure on that Syndra. Playing really close to her minions, weaving in and out, getting those key folks in there. And a fairly side to the Akali so far in the mid lane. Yeah, and I think Akali is doing pretty good. Just, uh waiting the mana out on Syndra, and I think that's where we're finally going to see an engage off her. She has the damage. I mean, you get the pushback, you can get right back in with an ult or an E, so not too worried about that. And then going back, starting his second round of players here. Looking to see if he has any opportunity to come back in this game. If you're Pantheon Chase, what lanes are you looking at as possible opportunity? I mean, I say farm it up quick, hit level six, and then you're just gonna use your ult to cut somebody off in the lane that's overextended, and you're looking at maybe a kill, possibly two if it's played mm -hmm. right. That's why Pantheon is just so good in the jungle. He can gank you from you know mid midway through With the map. With the setup from the Malphite, with the setup from the Syndra, you have two easy assists for your jungler to help assure those kills. It's going to be very interesting to see how this Pantheon chooses to play. But for now, a almost a K gold lead for the side of Ash and Ascension, but we will see if Valkyrie has the wherewithal of this. Whether the storm or the game. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping I see a bard ultimate kind of freeze them, and then the pantheon ultimate right on top of them. It would be kind of fun. That <laughs> would be kind of fun. Maybe even counterproductive. But it looks like it's like not too much going on. Not too much to play for right now. Looks like they have spotted the pantheon. No, in the top lane gang. Nar's gonna back off to safety. We're gonna see us disadvantage for Nar. Plenty more minions to farm up though. Nar is doing just fine. 
Meanwhile, Botlin with an almost 20 CS advantage for that Caitlyn, which is what we expected. Caitlyn is always going to have the push early game on an Ezreal, with the Morgana pressure as well. Oh, a nice E coming out of the Ezreal, dodging that Morgana bind. More of the same early game. Pretty, pretty calm. Yeah, I, mean, I like the Ezreal's gameplay. You know, he notices that the Morgana binds down and he just throws back all that he can before he has to go over to lane. So he's playing it pretty smart, I think. Sense is really playing to their strengths this game. Moving to their strengths, trying to snowball this uh, early game to a mid game. Look at we're already seeing a bot lane power dive. Will this be enough? Oh, the Bardo misses. That is the Q to go. But Pantheon's here. They oh, went too nice. long. More got is going to go down. And Olaf now not like, too far not behind. Over. And a moment of indecision costs Ash and Ascension yeah, and everything. Does, is Caitlyn gonna end up dying here because Malphite cut her right off with an ultimate? Looks like she's oh, gonna, she's gonna get walked all naked. the way back to her second tower if she has any sense. That Pantheon is smelled blood and is fiending for it. Yeah, he does. He's looking for something here. And that Caitlyn, wise decision, just walks all the way back past her second tower and goes for the recall. Okay. But a huge, huge swing by Ashley and Valkyrie there. Absolutely huge. The moment of indecision was easily capitalized. No, I think it was just, uh, you know, right place, right time by Pantheon. I mean, they, they ganked them bot lane. They had an easy tower dive, I think. And then Pantheon just happened to be right there. They had a moment of time, though, where they had to either commit or back out. And they did neither. They kind of chose to stick around there a little bit. They did. It did hurt them a little bit to do that. All right, but Olaf not really feeling the pressure. Knows he still has full reign of this jungle. Gonna go for the Rift Herald. See if he can use that to get some of the games back into it. Yeah, I mean, he's still just, I mean, two kills. It's still very powerful for both teams. Two kills, mind you, onto that Ezreal. A champion that's gonna keep scaling and scaling, and that little bit of power is going to, might make the difference in this game. It's definitely going to be a harder time for the Caitlyn to respond to that first battle. And looks like Olaf is swinging up top lane here. Will we see a gang? Doesn't look like it. Possibly led by Nar, but it doesn't really matter. Not a lot going on. Oh, we got Pantheon going into the bot lane here. 10, oh. e, ultimate by the guard. Why would he take that? Pantheon is just going to just die. Get left to but drive. Nar, the coordination is not there. Both teams get a kill, but nothing went how it was planned. Yeah, something was a little oh, off the there. Onto the Syndra. Are we going to see? Is that going to be enough? The trap not able to be chained. Might have been on cooldown, but it looks like. I think we see a rift bot here, and I think this tower's going down. I would agree. The numbers advantage coming in on the side of Ascension. But it looks like they're just going to take this dragon when they have the occasional advantage. Pantheon being off the map, won't be able to join for this fight. Looks like they will secure two drakes on the side of the center. It's going to be a win condition they're playing for this game. Yeah, and you know where the priorities are. I mean, they have a tower, but they go for dragons. Mm -hmm. Alright, Malphite getting some decent damage up here, but at what cost? At what cost? The dragons are stacking up, and Whoa. looks like a, re a kill onto the bard with the Olaf King. Oh. Surely they had to know where they were. Surely on the side of Valkyrie, they had to know they were bot side after dragon take a little bit of greed by that bard, portaling into three people. Unfortunate to see, and that Rift Herald will take the first turret of the game, ballooning the gold ring on the side of the section. Oh, what? Oh, oh he the he w on the NAR, and that might have been enough to turn it around. And it's not. The gank is effective top lane, but this Rift Herald is taking. Still going. Hey. He's a champ right there. He Absolutely. takes one tower. He takes half go the other. Him, but one tower or another tower at less than half. Good job, Rift Herald. Yeah, and a nice pickup top lane. I'm not entirely sure if landing that ability would have resulted in a kill, but it definitely would have made things interesting. More. Definitely. definitely. All right, checking in on the CS numbers. Ezreal's still a little bit behind, but the Cinder's got a bit of an advantage in the mid. Top lane's fairly even, and Olaf still has his edge in the jungle. But levels have started to normalize. Champion's slowly crawling his way back. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that Ezreal's got some uh, shutdown going on. So, 
they're gonna do everything they can to protect this guy. He, do, he does a lot of damage that we saw. A couple hits on that Morgana, and she's popping the stopwatch. For sure. It, it would have been another kill. No, that didn't happen. Another fairly tame moment in the game. Nothing yeah. on the map to play for. Looks like we're going to see a little bit of pressure coming mid here. Not sure what's for. Nar might just be here to help. No, I mean, your Slow tower's push. taken. You're going to give the solo XP to the bot laner. You know they're going to roam because they got nothing left to push. Mm -hmm. He's going to farm it up for a little bit. Get that 3-0 yeah. kill lead. Just keep farming them, farming them, farming them. I mean, he's your win condition right now. The damage is going to be immense when you get mm -hmm. the combo going. So I'm hoping to see this Ezreal do some good for Valkyrie here. Now, what we've seen the Sheen out of Ezreal. What Sheen out of have you seen the most out of Ezreal players so far? It's a good question. I mean, it, it kind of just goes with, I almost feel like, the match. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, before it was Iceborne Gauntlet, no matter what. Yeah. But now I, I think you get a little more leeway. Definitely, definitely. We'll have to see what that turns into on the side of Ezreal. Alright, the Gore Drinker by coming out for the Pantheon. Not going necessarily for the Neutrality build, getting a little bit of burst damage in there, a little bit more survivability. Still looking to farm up and see if he can be relevant in this game, which so far is doing a pretty decent job. Mm -hmm. I, I always like the Pantheon pick, I and mean, the guy can soak up all damage for a second and a half and when you engage a fight a lot of that damage is coming right on you off the bat that's why he is so useful looks like Malphite oh. going for the aggressive play here but the black shield is in time multiple people coming up in this top lane it is a party up here it looks like Ascension no wow. Valkyrie is going to come out on top yeah and okay. I I look at this, they are just gonna keep going down on them. A flash, oh. another flash coming out. Ooh, the pick off. Going in for that and I kill. like Valkyrie's prioritization there. They had the Morgana, just a free kill, and they said, you know what, Caitlyn's still here. Let's yeah. focus everything on her, and they took her mm -hmm. down right away. And I think it was a good engage on Malphite's a, end, a good, but a better mm -hmm. black shield by a, ver Morgana. a very good black shield, but a good decision on the side of Valkyrie to switch targets when they, they saw that black shield and just go for the easy kills. Yeah, and that's the thing, like the black shield that can stop the ult, but at Malphite is just so tanky, it doesn't even matter if he's mm. soaking up a couple damage for a few seconds and before your team gets there. We're but great to, rotations on both teams. We're starting to hit that scary point where what is the answer to that Malphite? The Akali doesn't necessarily have the 100 zero power to take on a full Malphite. One MR item and Malphite's gonna be able to tank an Akali combo with ease. Mm. That Akali wants nothing to do with that Malphite. Looking to dive that backline. Get that Ezreal. Get that Syndra, but easier said, easier said than done. It is. I mean, with your smoke screen, you kind of get a little bit of a leeway there. You get a couple seconds to regroup and kind of figure out what's what, and the focus comes off you. So we might be able to see an Ezreal or Syndra pick up by the Akali, but time will tell. Oh, look at the binding onto the Pantheon. Will this be enough? W blocks a lot of the damage. Misses the E on the Kaelin. It looks like to get out spot free. Another oh. binding onto the Syndra. Will that be enough? The Akali going in with the ult, and the damage is enough to take out the Syndra. Yeah. With the return Syndra, kill onto the Morgana. So a one for one, but Midlander for support. We're gonna take that on the side of Ascension every day, and that was going to lead into the third dragon. Oh, oh no, he got the Ezreal no on the map, but they're still able to finish it off. Kills go to the this side. This Ezreal is just so Valkyrie. powerful. He can just run them down right now. I don't think they have any way to just kill him if they wanted to. No, no, that power is starting to show. Oh, a little bit over aggressive, kind of hard, but it looks like it won't matter. Kill lead is going to go over in that fight to the side of Valkyrie, but third dragon on Ascension. It's gonna be an interesting condition for them to play for. Might be too little too late though. The hold still pretty even, but it looks like in most of these fights, Valkyrie has the pressure. And Nar going wow. out, finishing Dang off the other for the shutdown. Beautiful combo. Got the QW into the R. Ezreal didn't even have the chance to react. No, and you, you gotta feel bad for the teammates. I mean, they keep taking one for the team for this Pantheon. He keeps getting caught in compromising positions, and first the Syndra dies, now your Ezreal dies, and that shutdown goal is going over to mm -hmm. Nar.
Okay. Guess we're taking a look at gold draft. Don't remember asking for that, but we're going to have a little bit of an 800 gold lead in the mid. A little bit of, I'd say, about 300 lead on the side of Ascension for the jungle. Everything looking fairly even across the map, but that that end wheel, not as much gold as I thought he did. Go behind them with Caitlyn. Oh, scratch that. We have a fight going on in the mid. Caitlyn, done. The Mal fight and the Pantheon proving to be too powerful. And Olaf's in trouble here. Don't think he has the ult. Does have the ult. Able to pop it. Able to get out of there. But just goes to show you the amount of engaged power the side of Valkyrie has. Yeah, and like I was saying, that's what the Pantheon ult. All of a sudden, I mean, someone's just showing up out of nowhere. And you got two options. You can run or you can try to push everything onto that Pantheon right off the bat. And, you know, they get stuck trying to do that. And Kaelin ends up going down. All right, that'll be a red tail going over to the side of Valkyrie. Looking, maybe break that top turret, maybe break that bottom turret, remains to be seen. Yeah, the, the red tail, I don't think you really need top. The tower's already pretty low. So I think your rift comes after a fight somewhere, and we're going to see where they pick that one. Red Team's turret has been destroyed. We've only got less than three minutes until the next dragon. And we, we know that Ashton and Ascension is going to be there to contest that. That is sole point. It might be a way for them to get back into this game, regain some tempo. Hold is fairly easy, but you can tell that momentum is definitely on the side of uh, Momentum is there, and the momentum just keeps going. I like these engages by Valkyrie. They say, listen. I got Pantheon. I'm not afraid. I will ult until their whole team. And that's what they keep doing. And with it's the, working. With the follow-up from the Malphite and the Bard for the insurance policy, we get Harry team to catch up. Throw a Bard out. Let's chill for a second. Let everyone catch up. Mm -hmm. And they just going to wipe all these fights. On, on this. Ascension is going to have to play pretty craftily. Look for flanks. Look for picks. Try to get back into this game because the late game control of Valkyrie might just be too much for them to handle. Clearing vision around the Baron, trying to get ready for that objective. A little early to be taking it. Next team fight, though, anyone could be going for it. Right, more clearing of the vision. Looks like not too much going to happen at this state of the game. Olaf getting in there. Ascension. Maybe looking to play for a Baron at some point, but remains to be seen. Dragon coming up in about a minute. Now, we're definitely going to see both teams contest. If we can't, you're not going to see Valkyrie give away that Dragon for free. Oh, and it looks like a Kali might be caught out uh -oh, here. Don't you have the tricks in, in her little right bag here. to get out of here? Goes for the E, canceled by the W of Pantheon. And Akali goes going on a secret uh, mission here. Can she get out? Secret oh, oh, the oh, 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 and I think she's out of there. Out Going in, but we are back on Baron. They started Baron during that time. Committed four people, three people down to the bot side. Only Malphite's around. Syndra's coming up, but that's not going to be enough. Do they have enough to burst this down by the time the team gets over No, there? I don't think they do, and I think they're taking a lot of damage here. We oh, might see a big like Malphite ult. Looks like they're going to have to one. back off. They might have just leashed this for Valkyrie, but Valkyrie wants none of that either. Oh, and it looks like Akali is coming in for the flank, but they're just going to peel off and look for her, and nothing ends up coming out of that. No, I think TP4 if you're Valkyrie here, you just pop that rift mid. Yeah. Yup, exactly. Pop That's that what they're going to do. Pop that rift mid, get the pressure, get the positioning on the dragon, delay that soul timer for Ascension, and it looks like Ascension is just going to base. They didn't even decide to start the Baron. Ooh, and the ult coming in, stopping Morgana's recall. Not going to affect her too much, but... Looks like the first dragon going over to Valkyrie, slowing that soul win condition for Ascension. And if they can't even get that win condition, it is looking grimmer by the second for Ascension. Not out of this game, but it definitely got harder. Yeah, it did. I mean, I like that they finally get a dragon, which is nice. Okay. All right. Sorry about that little delay there. Sorting some things out, but we are looking. Looks like Ascension going to try to keep that vision line as strong as it was before, but some deep wards on the side of Valkyrie into that bot side. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes sorting things out comes out back and better than ever. I mean, look at Lamar Jackson. <laughs> you might be on to something. 
And this might Ooh, be we got a, a mid lane fight going Syndra. on here. Oh, no. half the flash to Morgana Bind. And I don't know why we're going back and forth. Nothing's even happening bot lane, but nothing happened mid lane either. No, I mean... It, it could have been a nice play by Akali. The, the damage just isn't there yet. And I'm, I'm waiting on that. Just full combo annihilation. For sure, for sure. A little bind going on the Pantheon. Not going to be much of anything. Honestly, these teams are just waiting for an opportunity to fight these objectives. We are every, Both teams playing safe, both teams farming at their turrets, and not a lot going on. I kind of want to see more regression out of the side of Valkyrie with their yeah, but easy this is, triggers. This is the play where you kind of slow everything down on both teams because you got to the point here where one mistake could mean the game or it could mean the uh, huge objective, and both teams understand that, and they're playing and doing what they can to stay passive. Agreed, agreed. Now, more vision clearing, more vision clearing, and can we get even more vision clearing? Both teams showing a proficiency in controlling the macro game, getting the wards down, clearing the enemy wards, and trying to get control. Be ready for anything that comes next. All right, that Nar getting a little bit more powerful in that side lane. Got the Sterics on top. Of his mythic yeah, item. He, it, so he's he a big boy. He's a big boy. Stronger by the second. Man is going to be chasing everybody down soon enough. But that Malphite already with the Thorn Mail. And no one wants to be hitting that thing anymore. No, I mean, it's just, it's so good against Olaf and Akali uh, just to delay and reduce that healing. I mean,. You ever see the Olaf heal with the Gore Drinker? He just oh, all of a sudden insane. gets a 5,000 HP. We already back. have one source of Grievous Wound and maybe more to come. But looks like once again, we are just we might just have to wait this out until the next Dragon Timer or until somebody gets caught out. It might be two minutes before we see any more action brewing. Yeah, I mean, I think that might be Olaf's 93rd Scuttle Crab this game. He has been on point of just taking every single one of them mm. and it's definitely helped in terms of controlling the map and getting a little advantage most over Pantheon. Most definitely, most definitely. Alright, more jungle clear going on here. Nothing going on. Both teams still playing extremely safe. Know the conditions they need to play for and those conditions may be one and the same. Both playing for Dragons, both playing for Barons. Neither team going for anything too aggressive. Looks like we might have a 40-minute game incoming. And, you know, I'm, I don't mind seeing that. We're going to see no. a lot of power from these teams. And they both respect each other. They know what each team is capable of, and they're mm -hmm. kind of hanging away from each other. But yeah, I wonder what's going to sure. happen in a minute here, because the dragon's going to be up, right? Do you contest the soul, or do you let them take it and you take Baron? What do you think? If I'm... That's a tough call. If I'm on the side of Valkyrie, I would almost say, screw the dragon and get the Baron. They know they can pressure the map, and the little advantage that a Wind Soul is going to give you is not going to surmount the push power of that Baron. That's a matter of what they end up prioritizing. Oh, and it looks like they're going to prioritize a play onto this Malphite, but it's Gnar that has the numbers disadvantage. It won't amount to much of anything. No. That Gnar has got enough to tank up ignores that bard says get the hell off of me yeah and i love it right you see a full combo out by the nar and the malphite lost his shield that's what i think is just so oh, that, great that is the takeaway from that and morgana not sure what she's looking for she there. just wait, wait used her all in dragon is up in 15 morgana seconds ultimate down a little bit of over aggression by the morgana team not there to follow up and that, not having that ultimate for the fight is going to be the trigger for Valkyrie. Just take that dragon and delay the soul point once more. Yep, and Valkyrie has full control over here. Oh. Good setup on the side of Valkyrie. Being able to zone them out. We still have the Bard ultimate, and there it is. Great Bard two ultimate. People out. But Bard is going to get taken out, and it looks like they won't even be able to finish off the dragon. Valkyrie going in there, and it looks like the Ascension soul goes will over too. be going We'll be getting Ooh. the soul point. Oh, wow. Kills going on both sides. It is a bloodbath. Looks like Valkyrie is going to pay for their aggression. But Nahar. Huge going ultimate. In, trying Huge to go ultimate. for the ace. And it looks like Ascension will pull off the full ace, get the soul, and get the Baron. Yeah. What a sequence of plays by Ascension, taking the game by the reins, and making it their own. 
I know, Valkyrie kind of just didn't finish the dragon. I mean, you saw the Pantheon all go in there. He, they were looking for kills. Olaf goes, wait wait a minute, you just left the pit. I'm going right in there. I'm taking a dragon. And I think it was an excellent flash by Morgana moment. to dodge that Ezreal yes. ult. It could have been a different story. A moment of miscommunication on the side of Valkyrie might just cost them everything. The mid-game spikes are coming in on the side of Ascension, and it's going to be a little too much. Nar going in, looking for the play. Bard has to get out of there, and that bolt will delay it for a few more <laughs> seconds. Not really going to do too much, but a valiant effort by that Bard. Yeah, I mean... Looking for plays, looking for the miracles, and they're just not there for him. No, I mean, they had it so good for so long. Uh, you really want to know what happened there. I'm not entirely sure why they just left the pit. I know the engage was coming on you, but... Just take that Bartle, freeze them, and finish off that dragon. I don't know if they had the burst to burn it down. I don't, I'm not sure. They just had a split call. Half the team went one way, and half the team was just tanking the dragon. It was just the Olaf tanking the dragon, and yeah. that is what sealed the deal for them. Now, can Ascension use this advantage to push some inhibitors? Push, maybe even the Nexus. We will see. And it looks like that aggression is going to continue. Akali going and nice finishing off the Syndra. Akali. Beautiful play. The Malphite is by himself. The rest of the team kind of Malphite stayed behind. And it looks like the Zanyas, it will be enough. No, it won't. Akali will be going down. They got their sights on Pantheon next. Shield coming in. Will it be enough? It will not. That's a three for one. Maybe more. Olaf looking for it. Gnar coming in. And they're just going to back off, take these towers. No, Nar with the flat W into the oh, ultimate. Oh, beautiful. The going down, and ultimate. that is another ace on the side of Ascension. These aggressive plays are happening one after the other, and you just love to see it. Yeah, that is back-to-back -back two excellent clutch alts by the Nar here. I mean, the Olaf was just tanking for so long. You would think oh, that's and not even possible. And those death timers, it might just be enough for them to end the game, and it looks like it will it close It looks out. like it, and My Active God. Ascension is going to get their first victory here. Looks like they lost the range for a little while, but they were able to grip that bull by the horns and ride it straight to victory. That'll be Ash and Ascension coming out with their first one of the split, and Ash and Valkyrie losing in their first game. Yeah. Uh, it was a couple things where it could have went both ways, but For it ended sure. up favoring Ash and Ascension in the end there. The big plays by uh, King Mike with these ultimates on the NAR. They were coming later in the, the fights, but they were just so clutch in terms no. of stopping that Ezreal kiting and that damage. It just worked out for them. Most definitely. That Nar was a one man wrecking crew. Getting into the back lines, the flash plays, the W's he hit that led into those ultimates. Yeah. Beautiful work on that Nar. It was some beautiful plays. It really was. And I'm glad we got to see King Mike on the Nar rather mm -hmm. than facing the Nar. And some good Akali play coming out of the mid, too. That last play was all facilitated by the Akali. Peeling the rest of the team back. Malphite was helpless, just died by himself. Yeah. It's not even enough to get. The rest of the team to follow her up and uh, yeah and i mean he's he's doing his job right he's just sitting there to soak up damage he's trying to get his team to buy some time to do something but mm -hmm. it ended up being a meaningless death and they just kept running it down on him i mean you, you saw the it. olaf pushing on that second tier tower and he just kept staying on there mm -hmm. i mean the sterix pops he's still staying on attacking the tower and then nar morgana everybody else is just doing the rest of the work great effort Great effort absolutely, by absolutely great effort by Ascension. Really good job of t bringing that game back into their hands. Had it early, lost a little bit mid game, but by late, just two two fights really turned the whole tempo of that game and brought Ascension to victory. Yeah, and uh, applaud goes all around. I mean, everybody played an excellent game. I know game. a very very good game and. My God, it goes to show you how quickly these games can end. One Baron push, and that was all it took for Ascension to snowball that game into a victory. Right, absolutely. It was just one thing right after the other, after the other, after the other. It was a quick couple minutes there to really just end a game that looked like it was going to be a stalemate. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. All right, any moment now, we are going to be going into an interview with one of the victorious players to be determined. Can't wait to get... A fresh new face on the interview screen. I know, I know. We saw a little bit of Benji the other day. He was making some great plays, so we had to get him in there. Um, 
but it'll be nice. It'll be who, nice. Who do you want to see on that team? I'm I'm almost looking to see that Nar. Those plays he was having that game really, really helped him carry them to victory. Yeah, I would like that too. That would be pretty nice, but I'm happy to get whoever we can get. We will see. We've got our tech team working on that as we speak, so we can only imagine how long this will take. Eh, probably a couple seconds to minutes. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Say that. You, you really got to cover all bases, um, and then we'll be all set. All right. We're going to take a short break here. No, we're not going to take a short break because... Our producer is a masochist and wants us to riff on Cam for hours on end in blazing heat. I mean, I don't mind doing it. I know you got a whole life story that you're going to tell over these next couple, six, seven weeks here. Yeah, you got you to gotta um, love that. I think last week we finished uh, hearing about, what was it, your fourth grade. So I'm kind of looking forward to what happened after that. That's kind of weird we're talking about fourth grade because I thought I repressed those memories. Mm-hmm uh hypnosis will bring it back no matter what how long was the broadcast last time anyways what the heck all right well i'm gonna tell you what chase you take it from here i'm gonna take a short break because oh we're going into interview wow some clarity for once and who do we have we got tommy two time in the interview right now All right. How is it going, Tommy? Great showing on the Akali. How'd you feel that game went for you guys? Uh, it's pretty sloppy to start with. A um, little bit of miscommunication, but I think once we had the three dragons and we knew in their head that uh, if we were able to get the ocean sold, then like, they'd be pretty flustered. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just started slowing the game down a bit. We got a lot of vision over the major objectives over Baron and then around dragon times we started putting our vision towards the dragon side and then a uh, few misplays by them and then some clutch plays by us just mm -hmm. made the fights go super easy yeah and you know we love seeing you on the aggressive champions here are we going to keep seeing more of that more Akali picks and so on if they let me play it I don't know <laughs> yeah no, I mean, I, I thought you did so. a fantastic job. The Syndra pick at the end there, I think, is huge. She's a she's great at controlling those waves, especially with the Baron push. And you said, listen, I'm going in the four people. I'm going to take out Syndra. You guys do the rest of the work. Yeah, Pretty much. The whole point was uh, just get a pick that could survive the lane, but also threaten Syndra and Ezreal on the back line because they had a really decent front line with Pantheon mm -hmm. and Malphite. But if I was able to just be a nuisance in the back line, then... Uh, the rest of the team could just do work, which is pretty much exactly what happened in the last team fight, where I just full sent my entire like every ability onto the Syndra. Yeah. And I still had I still had Zanya's and Ezreal pretty much had to stand still and wait for me while the rest of my team just killed Malphite. So I, I you gotta love it. it. Good good plays by you. Some big plays coming out of your NAR top lane too. Some picks mid that final flash W into the ult to end the game. What do you have to say about his showings that game? Um, Mike played pretty well. Uh, oh, he's a very vocal cool. player, very emotional player too. So when he lands those ultis or he lands like a, or he gets a solo kill or something, he, he gets pretty hyped. Um, sometimes he doesn't stop talking, but you know, it's, it is <laughs> what it is. He, that, his NAR is, he hasn't been liking it recently, but I, I hope we start picking it again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. Sure, I mean, sure. it's good to have a motivational player like that to kind of rallies the whole crowd and your team up. Then you just start taking big plays after that. Sure, for sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, oh. excellent game. I mean, we we really did love watching it. Uh, we were saying you 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 guys were kind of stalemated for what seemed like eight ten minutes. There oh, really yeah, not that, too much was going game, on. You, you guys did a good job of stalling out that mid game. It looked a little bit like you were losing the reins a little bit. Had a better early game. Almost lost the reins, but were able to right the ship, get that final soul, and that's what really snowballed the rest of the game. It was over within three minutes after that. Yeah. Yeah, we uh we kind of like slapped ourselves on the wrist when we gave Ezreal three kills when we did a really, really terrible dive bot lane. <laughs> and everyone in the game, everyone knows Yillian. Uh, he's part of our org, and everyone mm -hmm. knows he's capable of, like, 1v9ing games. Uh, so when he, we saw him with three kills, and he was the same level mm -hmm. as me, and he was matching he was matching an Akali in the mid lane, I was like, oh, Ooh, this is that's not good. too hot. You're right. Um, but then uh, we just pretty much played around Vision and 
played around pretty crucial cooldowns. Uh, Ezreal's Flash, Ezreal's Heal, stuff like that. And uh, when when you send a Nar and a Kali and like an Morgana binding in his direction, he can't dodge everything. So mm -hmm. we just pretty much focused him in almost every fight. And if it wasn't him, it was uh, Syndra. So, wow, yeah. Excellent work there, and so far in the sister rivalry, Ascension is on top. Great game. Hope to see, be talking to you soon, and good luck in your future games. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Of course. Anytime.